Welcome mathematicians to another video on further maths. In today's video, we'll be looking at the topic of transition matrices, looking at the specific skills of applying transition matrices to recurrence relations. Today's video consists of three separate examples. So example one, a population of birds feed at two different locations A and B on an island. The change in the percentage of the birds at each location from year to year can be determined from the transition matrix T shown below. So here we have our transition matrix. The transition matrix shows us that those birds who feed at location A this year, 80% will feed at location A next year. And of those that feed at location A this year, 20% will transition to location B. Likewise, our transition matrix shows us that those birds that feed at location B this year, 40% of them will transition to location A next year, whilst 60% of them will transition to location B next year. In addition to this, we're told that in 2018, 55% of the birds feed at location B, and we're asked to calculate in 2019 what percentage of the birds that are expected to feed at location A. First of all, this is clearly a transition matrix. We've been given the word transition. We can see there's a transition in our transition matrix from this year to next year. And in the data we've been given, you can see there's a transition from 2018 to 2019. So here's our transition recurrence relation. This is pretty much saying the next state is equal to the previous state multiplied by the transition matrix. So let's fill that in. So first of all, we can substitute in the value for t of the transition matrix, and here we have it. Next, we look at the previous state and the next state. Well, we're looking at moving from state of 2018 to the next state of 2019. Let's substitute in the data that we have for 2018. We're told that 55% of the birds feed at location B. Notice that we have A and B here in our matrix in order, A at the top and B at the bottom. Accordingly, when we go to our 2018 matrix, we have also data A at the top and data B at the bottom. So that goes in as 55. Now logically, if we've got 55% of our birds feeding at location B on the island, we must add up to 100% in our matrix. So that leaves us with 45% of birds located at location A. And so there's our 2018 state matrix. 45% of our birds at location A and 55% of the birds at location B. So we multiply the two matrices and read them in the same vertical order as the transition matrix. So our answer is that in 2019, 58% of the birds are expected to feed at location A. Example number two. A small shopping centre has two coffee shops, Mario's and Luigi's. The percentage of coffee buyers at each shop changes from day to day, as shown in the transition matrix T below. So again, we have our transition matrix. This tells us that of those that bought coffee at Mario's today, 85% will buy at Mario's tomorrow. Likewise, of those that bought coffee at Mario's today, 15% will transition to Luigi's tomorrow. And also, those who bought coffee at Luigi's today, 35% will transition to Mario's. And of those who bought coffee at Luigi's today, 65% will remain at Luigi's tomorrow. On a particular Monday, 40% of coffee buyers bought their coffee at Mario's. The matrix recursion relation, which is shown here, is used to model this situation. And our question is, what percentage of coffee buyers are expected to buy their coffee at Luigi's on Friday of the same week? So this is the transition matrix that talks about the transition from today's coffee purchase to tomorrow's coffee purchase. This is our standard matrix recurrence relation. However, this question isn't just about today and tomorrow. This is about starting at Monday and finding an answer on Friday. So this is forecasting forward. So we can use this recurrence rule to calculate the state matrix in the future after multiple transitions. So we're going from Monday all the way to Friday. That involves one transition, two transitions, three, and four. So we replace the n in our equation with the number four because this particular question involves the undertaking of four transitions. So effectively, we're calculating from the Monday state to the Friday state, which involves four transitions. Let's set this up. So first of all, we substitute in our transition matrix and we substitute in our Monday state matrix. And much like our transition matrix, Mario's is on the top, Luigi's is on the bottom, Mario's on the top, Luigi's on the bottom. Let's fill this in. 40% of people buy their coffee on Monday at Mario's. Now clearly, if 40% are buying from Mario's, there must be the remaining 60% to make up the 100% of coffee drinkers at Luigi's. So we'll fill that in. So our state matrix for Monday 
is 40% of people at Mario's and 60% at Luigi's. Let's perform our calculation. So what percentage of coffee buyers are expected to buy their coffee at Luigi's on Friday of the same week? Again, Mario's is at the top of the Friday state matrix and Luigi's is at the bottom. Our answer is on Friday, 32% of the coffee buyers, approximately 32%, are expected to buy their coffee at Luigi's. Our third and final example. Consider the matrix recurrence relation shown below. We're provided with our initial state matrix. We're provided with our transition matrix. And we're also provided with the S1, the first state matrix as well. The question being asked here is to calculate the values of A, B, C, and D, which are located within the transition matrix. So first of all, let's set up the recurrence relation. So state one can be calculated by multiplying the initial state by the transition matrix. Here we have it. So this was S1, we've already been given. Our S0, our initial state matrix we've been provided with. And here's our transition matrix with the variables we're trying to calculate, A, B, C, and D. You will recall the columns of any transition matrix must add up to one because they're a probability sum. So looking at column one, A plus 0.2 plus 0.4 equals one. Well, 0.2 and 0.4 together give us 0.6, which means A must equal 0.4. So first of all, we've got our first answer, A equals 0.4. We'll put that in our matrix. Let's consider the second column. Column two of our transition matrix. 0 0.3 plus B plus 0.2 equals one. Now 0.3 and 0.2 add together to give us 0.5. So B must also equal 0.5 to give that column a total of one. So we'll slot that value in as well. Our final column, we have column three. And that tells us that C plus 0.3 plus D equals one. Now, unfortunately, we've got here too many unknowns to solve. I've got one equation with two unknown variables. We can't solve that. So we've got to look at another way to solve variable C and D. Let's consider the multiplication of the first row, the top row of the transition matrix, with the initial state matrix, S0, which are nicely colored red here. So multiplying row one of the transition with the initial state column matrix. We end up with 30 multiplying with 0.4 here. And we're adding to that the 20 multiplies with the 0.3. And finally, the 40 multiplies with our variable C to give us 40C. When you add the sum of those products together, you get the value 42. So let's simplify that. 30 times 0.4 gives us 12. 20 times 0.3 gives us 6. 40 times C gives us 40C and that equals 42. If I add my 12 and 6 together, that gives me 18 and take that from 42. I end up with 40C equals 24 and divide both sides by 40 gives me C of 0.6. I now know that C equals 0.6 and I've only got a variable D to work out. And I can simply go back to summing my columns to find the answer for D. So in column three, I've got 0.6 plus 0.3 plus D equals one. Now 0.6 and 0.3 give me 0.9 and 0.9 plus D gives me one. So D must equal 0.1. So here we have our final value D equals 0.1 and we fill that in. So to answer this question, it says calculate the values of A, B, C, and D. And our answers are A equals 0.4, B equals 0.5, C equals 0.6, and D equals 0.1. You've been watching a Juddy Productions video. If you've enjoyed and indeed learned something from this video, then please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.